Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve, who's in his powerful series this month called The Unknown God, Discovering the Person and Power of the Holy Spirit. Today, practical and powerful truth about the workings of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian. Romans chapter 8 is one of the great chapters in the Bible. It speaks of freedom in Christ. You know, really, uh, we were talking before the the service, and and Josh uh, Lawrence said to me, he said, oh, I was quoting Romans 8. He said, oh, you're quoting, uh, that's Romans, isn't it? And I said, yeah. He said, Romans is the hardest book to understand. And I I said, I know, it really is, because it's so difficult deep and dense, and, and you, you go through there and you're like, oh man, I'm just two verses and my brain is, is fried. But, but here's kind of how Romans is set up, especially in the middle part of Romans. You have Romans chapter 6 that tells us we're dead to sin. That's wonderful. We're dead to sin as Christians. We're alive to God. Romans chapter, that, that's on paper. That, and then Romans chapter 7 says, you know what? But here's the deal. You still really struggle with sin as a Christian. Paul said, the good that I want to do, I don't do. But the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? So Romans 6, hey, on paper, it's good. You're dead to sin, alive to God. Romans 7, but it's like, yeah, but man, I sure don't feel dead to sin. And Romans 8 says, the key to walking in victory is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mentioned four times in Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven chapters, the Holy Spirit's mentioned four times. And in Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 18 times. 18 times. It's life in the Spirit. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So let's Hear some truth from the Lord today. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin... He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Two truths I want to share with you today. Truth number one, and these are are freeing truths. And if you know the truth, the truth shall make you free, Jesus said. First truth, the Lord Jesus sets us free from the penalty of sin. Free from the penalty of sin. For the law, verse 2, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. You know, before Jesus came on the scene, before he became a man and lived the perfect life and died on the cross and rose again from the dead, there was a law that was working in the universe. It was the law of sin and of death. And that law was in effect the moment Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. When they sinned, then then death came, the law of sin and of death. And the law of sin and death says this, if you sin, the soul that sins shall surely die. That's the law of sin and death. And God gave his law to his people The Ten Commandments and the the law of Moses, he gave that to us to show us what was right, to show us what was wrong, to show us what to do, to show us what not to do, not to cripple us, not to make life harder. It's this is the way to live. This is the way to life. It's like a street sign that says, which way to life? This way. Follow these rules and these principles and you will experience life. But all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you know what's so amazing? It just typifies the way man is. 
when God was with Moses, or Moses was with God, I should say, on Mount Sinai, and God was giving him the Ten Commandments, written, the Scripture says, with the finger of God, the people were at the base of Mount Sinai, and what were they doing? They were fashioning a golden calf to worship. So as God is giving the law, they're breaking the law. That's the way man is. The law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. The soul that sins shall surely die. Now, the law rightfully condemns us because we're sinners. And the law says, hey, you sinned, you're condemned. You, you are judged. You are, you are under judgment for that sin. It's so strange when you think about it. See, the, the law is really like a thermometer. It, it, it just registers conditions. It just tells you how, how high your fever is. It tells you how sick you are. That's all the law does. The law is kind of like a mirror. It just shows you, here's the picture. Here's what you really look like. Now, anybody knows if you're sick, you don't get better from a thermometer. You, you take your temperature to see how sick you are or if you're getting any better, but the thermometer doesn't help you at all. It's just like if you have a dirty face, the, the mirror doesn't help you clean your face. You know, nobody pulls out a compact and says, man, I, my face is so dirty. I, wow, sorry about that. I'll go on this side. I, I'm going to rub my face with my compact. No, you don't do that. The mirror doesn't help clean you up. It just shows you how dirty you are. So the law, all it does, it's the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, the Scripture says, weak as it was through the flesh, what, the, what can the law not do? It can't save you. It can't forgive you. It just shows you you're sick, pal. You have a fever of 180. It's off the chart. You're so filled with sin and sickness. And because of that, you're condemned. The soul that sins shall surely die. Now, what did God do? God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He put on flesh and blood just like you and I have. The great eternal God became a man. And he went up against the law of sin and death. So think of it this way. Some of you guys that like to watch UFC and, and these fighting uh, shows and things like that, you know, it used to be everything was in the boxing ring, but now we don't really uh, do boxing as much as we do the octagon. You get in the octagon, and you can't get out of that thing, and it's two uh, warriors in there. Well, here is the battle of the ages. It's the law of sin and death that had been in existence since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And here is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And Jesus went up against the law of sin and death in the octagon, and they were duking it out. And man, it was some kind of battle because before Jesus entered into the octagon, he was praying in the garden and he was sweating blood and he was praying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he went into the octagon and he faced off with the law of sin and death and he defeated the law of sin and death. And the way he defeated the law of sin and death is he took all the sin into himself. All of your sin and all of my sin and all of the sin of the whole world that was ever committed, he took it into himself. The sinless Son of God became sin for us. And because he became sin on the cross, he took all of God's condemnation and all of God's wrath and all of the judgment that was due you and due me, that went on Jesus. And there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and of death. Hey, the law rightfully condemns us, but the Savior graciously takes away all our condemnation because he took all of that into himself. And he defeated the law of sin and of death. And he can pass on the victory to you and to me. So, I don't have to stand condemned. I don't have to feel like, oh, I've blown it so bad. God must hate me. I know that the judgment is awaiting me because I did X, Y, and Z. 
No. All of that has been taken away. And there is not one spot, there is not one uh, drop of condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're not in Christ Jesus, you are condemned. You sit here today, you watch on television, listening on live streaming on radio, you are condemned if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's, in Greek literature, there, there's this thing called the sword of Damocles. And it's a story about a king, and above his throne there was a sword that hung over his head, and it was hanging by a thread. And at any moment he was so afraid that the sword was going to fall on his head. Hey, that's the way it is for every person who is outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is God's wrath and God's condemnation. Uh, John 3, 36, the wrath of God, the Scripture says, for those who don't believe, it abides on that person. It's the sword of Damocles that's hanging over your head. And if you don't get saved, one day psh, that sword is going to fall upon you. And God doesn't want that. That's why Jesus came. He said, I defeated the law of sin and death. I'm offering it to you. If you'll just come to me, then you can be in Christ Jesus. And then there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the sword of Damocles goes away. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the Lord Jesus has taken away the penalty of sin. And the way he took it away is by receiving all the penalty for your sin and my sin. That's why on the cross, the last thing, second to the last thing he said was this. It is finished. To Tetelestai, I've paid it all. It's paid in full. That's a marketplace word. It means paid in full. And whenever, when it's paid in full, you don't have to keep paying on it. You know, if you buy a car and you have uh, buy it over three years, you make payments every month, hopefully, and then at the end of the 36 months, you make that last payment and they send you something that says paid in full, something to that effect. You don't owe any more on this car. So buy another one. You know, that's how they like to do it. But I don't know anymore on my car, Debbie's car, because it's paid in full. You know, when churches uh, pay off all their debts, oftentimes on a building, they'll have a note burning. And it just shows this is paid in full. That we own this outright. We don't owe any more on this. That's the way your salvation is. It's paid in full. God doesn't require anything more of you. There's nothing to add to what Jesus did on the cross. And there is therefore now no condemnation. There is no penalty for your sin or my sin. It is totally taken out of the way. So that's the very first truth. The Lord Jesus sets us free from the penalty of sin. Second truth. The Holy Spirit sets us free from the power of sin. There's the penalty of sin. Jesus took that away when he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. And when I put my faith and trust in Jesus, then God wraps his gavel concerning me and says, Jeff Shreve, not guilty. Not guilty. You can go now. Everything has been paid. Your debt has been paid, paid in full. And we don't do double jeopardy here, so you can never have to pay for that again. We burned the note. You are free, free and clear. Wonderful. That's the penalty of sin. But God doesn't just end it there. He also frees me from the power of sin through the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. He says, as an offering for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You walk according to the Spirit... And when you walk according to the Spirit, the requirement of God's law, God's law is good. God's law isn't bad, it's good. But the problem we have with God's law is we can't keep it. It's a good law, but God, I, I just keep falling short of it. That's why it says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We should fall short of the standard. We miss the mark constantly. But God's law is good. So... The Lord has taken the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. And now I can fulfill, according to verse 4, the requirement of the law, and I do it according to the spirit. Now that is really, really important. The power of the Holy Spirit. Now remember this. You do not have the power 
to overcome the flesh. The Scripture says in verse 5, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, and those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not it subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So here you have a person, and they want to please God. Say you have a Christian, this person who is, is in Christ, put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and here I am, Jeff Shreve, a Christian, and my desire is to please God, and how am I going to please God? Well, I'm going to please God, and I'm going to fulfill his law, and how am I going to do it? I'm going to do it through gritting my teeth and through trying harder and harder and harder, and you know, the law says that you shall not commit adultery, and Jesus upped that when he said, and if any of you looks on a woman to lust for her, he's committed adultery with her already in his heart and so every guy in here is saying well you know I hadn't I hadn't committed physical adultery but as far as spiritual as, as far as lusting after a woman there's not a guy on the planet who would dare stand up and say I've never lusted for a woman in my life nobody would say that except a liar he's got a problem with lust and lying because every guy that's that's the a struggle in a guy's heart and so how how am i going to how am i going to fulfill this commandment of god this is just this is the will of God, the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 your sanctification that is that you abstain from sexual immorality and lust is sexual immorality and so how do i fulfill that well I just got to try harder. I just got to grip my teeth harder. But you know what? Willpower can't beat sin's power. Willpower can never beat sin's power. I don't care how strong your willpower is. You can't beat sin's power. You can't in and of yourself defeat the flesh and overcome the flesh. But you can cooperate with the Holy Spirit to overcome the flesh. In order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, he goes on to say in those verses that we read about the flesh can't please God. The flesh doesn't submit itself to the law of God. Uh, the, the mindset on the flesh is death. And then he says in verse 8, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of Christ, of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And if, God, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells you. Verse 12, so then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit... You are putting to death the deeds of the body. You will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So what does all that mean? It means this. If you want to have victory in your life, freedom to live the way God intended you to live, so you, the chains aren't around your feet and you're constantly falling to the same old sins and you're never able to rise above. If you want to have real freedom, it comes when you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to cooperate with the Holy Spirit? Well, it means you yield to the Spirit's leadership. That's one of the first things that it means. You yield to the Holy Spirit. Verse 14, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So you let the Holy Spirit lead you. You say in your life, it's not I, but you bow your knee and say, but Christ. It's Christ who's going to lead. Christ by his Spirit. I'm going to follow him. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit sit in the driver's seat of my life. I'm giving up the steering wheel of my life to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to let him lead. That's how you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Second way you cooperate with the Holy Spirit is you make necessary changes as you obey the Holy Spirit. This is key and critical. Necessary changes as you obey. See, 
to willingly follow the Holy Spirit, that carries with it the idea of obedience. You're going to do what he says because he sits in the driver's seat. Just like if you get in my car and I'm driving, you're going where I'm driving, right? Now, you can say, Jeff, I don't want to go there, but if that's where the driver wants to go, that's where you're going. And when the Holy Spirit sits in the driver's seat of your life, then you're going to go where he goes. Now, if you don't want to go there, you can pitch a fit and you can tell the Holy Spirit, get out, I don't want you to drive. I'll, and you can grab the wheel. People do that all the time in the Christian life. No, 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 Holy Spirit, I want to do this. I want to go there. Hey, we're passing up the strip joint. I want to go there. Let's pull in here. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And so how I grow as a Christian, how you grow as a Christian, is you have to co cooperate with the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, you lead me, and whatever you ask me to do, I say Yes. If you want to grow, you have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit of God, and you have to remind yourself of the truth, of the truth. What is the truth? Verse 6, for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. You know why we have such trouble with sin? as believers because sin has an appeal sin has pleasure within it but it's a temporary pleasure it's a passing pleasure it, it, it's like eating I, I have a a good friend of mine who is lactose intolerant but he likes ice cream and he knows if I eat this ice cream, it's going to taste really good, and I'm going to pay for it for hours and hours and hours afterward. I'm going to be sick all night. That's the way sin is. It tastes really good going down until you have to deal with the aftermath of it. There's a big price tag with sin. What do I have to do to have victory in my life? I have to remind myself of the truth that the mindset on the flesh is death. And the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. And if I want to experience life to the full, if I want to experience peace, if I want to experience joy, I'm never going to experience that by going the way of the flesh. Because the way of the flesh, it's a one-way ride that goes all the way to the pigsty, and that's where it leads every single time. You look at people who are miserable in life. They're not miserable because they've been following after Christ. They're miserable because they've gone the way of the flesh. The mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. So I have to constantly remind myself when I'm tempted, okay, am I going to choose death or am I going to choose life? Where does this thing lead? It might give me temporary pleasure. This bowl of ice cream sure tastes good, but I'm lactose intolerant, and I'm going to be paying for that, and I don't want to go there. Lord, I want to go your way. I want to go your way. You remind yourself of the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God wants to give you a life full of joy and peace and love and power. If you'll cooperate with his spirit, he'll set you free. Set you free. My friend, now is the time to do business with God. If you're watching and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus, this is what I want you to do. Just pray and say, Lord, I want to know you in a real and personal way. I don't want to know about you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus, I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself, but I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. And right now I surrender my heart, my life to you. Come into my life, forgive me of all my sins, be my Lord and Savior, I surrender myself to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, The Holy Spirit and the Life of a Christian, is from Pastor Jeff Shreve's series, The Unknown God. 
Discovering the Person and Power of the Holy Spirit. Both the series and the individual message are available in multiple formats when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Before we close out the year, there's something really important I need to ask you. You see, while this year's been really tough for all of us, we've also seen more people than ever engage with our teaching content on television, radio, and online. Hey, God is really using us to bring real hope to more lives than ever before. And that's why I'd like to ask you to join us in this effort to help us reach our challenging end of the year goal of $350,000. This amount will provide the needed financial support to expand the ministry in 2021 so we can speak the truth and love to many more hearts and homes around the world. Now, I realize $350,000 is not a small amount, but when you look at the lives that are being challenged and changed by the Word of God, you can trust it's an investment that makes an eternal difference in a multitude of lives. Now, with your gift of $25 or more, I'd like to say thanks by sending you a beautiful, brand new, year-long daily devotional book called The Spirit of God Within You. I contributed to this devotional along with 50 other pastors and Christian leaders. I trust this book will bless your life each day of the new year. Thank you for your very best year in gift so together we can impact more souls for Jesus Christ. God bless you. To get the new year-long daily devotional book, The Spirit of God Within You, you can make your gift of $25 or more when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. And thank you for extending your influence for Christ around the world through From His Heart. From His Heart is the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you, and He has a wonderful plan for your life. You can find out more about that plan. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real